Well, howdy all, grab yourself a drink. It is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today, I wanted to tackle a question of just what is going on in the Sanctum League economy. 3.20 has seen a big, big, big change where the Chaos Orb has cratered in relative buying power compared to the Divine Orb, which is the new meta mod standard and has been since 3.19. Now, I wanna go through a bunch of the things that are underlying this trend and look at what's likely to change in the future. But firstly, I just want to start by saying that whilst players value the Divine Orb at a lot more than 48 Chaos Orbs, there's pretty compelling evidence that one Divine Orb drops per 48 Chaos Orbs throughout the game. This ratio was data mined way, way, way back. We're talking back in 2013, back when you could actually data mine drop rates from the game client. This is no longer possible, but there's a bunch of reasons to believe it's still true. Firstly, there's been a bunch of tests that have been run on that data that was obtained at the same time by some of the people that are responsible for the new PoE wiki. And they found that a bunch of other data in it seemed to be true. For example, it would help you predict how frequently a specific crafting base would come up. Are you more likely to see sorcerer gloves or silk gloves from a random drop on the ground? This data said that you were much more likely to see sorcerer gloves. Most people intuitively thought that was not true. So players went and tested it and found that not only were you more likely to see sorcerer gloves, but it would be roughly in the ratio that was predicted by the data. And so for that reason, I believe that it accurately reflects drop rates as they were in 2013. So back in 2013, every Divine Orb that dropped, there were 1.6 Exalted Orbs and there were 48 Chaos Orbs that dropped. Now over time, the Exalted Orb drop rate was actually decreased to be in line with the Divine Orb. Players didn't actually realize this at the time, but there was a bunch of testing that indicated that it may have been true. What was more evident was that the 1 to 48 on Divine Orbs and Chaos was still a case definitely during Incursion League when there was a massive test that was done by streamer Slippery Jim and also during Delirium League when the same streamer repeated the same test. In both cases, he ran 10,000 maps. He didn't run them all himself. He crowdsourced it out a bunch, but tracked all of the drops that came about and all of them were still compatible with the idea that you got one Divine Orb now and one Exalted Orb for every 48 Chaos Orbs. We also see this 1 to 48 ratio appear in the data mined weightings of the various Eldritch Altars. These are the Eater Altars and the Exarch Altars. The Eater Altar has a weight of 1,000 for giving you Divine Orb rewards, and the Exarch Altar has a weight of 48,000 for giving you Chaos Orb rewards. Now these Altar weightings don't prove anything about core game drop weights, but they do provide some circumstantial evidence that it's likely still 1 to 48. All this comes back to the same conclusion. Divine Orbs, 48 times rarer than Chaos Orbs. Exalted Orbs, 48 times rarer than Chaos Orbs. And this has been the case for a long time. A little bit of a fun aside here, Anoles are actually weighted at 400, which makes them two and a half times rarer than Divines. Veiled Chaos weighted at 500, which makes them twice as rare as Divines. There's no information on Sacred Orbs. I suspect they might be weighted at 100, but that's something that we just don't know. What's happening here is that Chaos Orbs are falling in buying power. This is not so much that Divine Orbs are rising in buying power, it's that Chaos Orbs themselves are falling. So let's go into this a little bit by looking at the price of stack decks. I think stack decks are a really good indicator of the entire Path of Exile economy, because they disgorge pretty much every sort of item in the game. And stack decks price based upon the Forbidden Trove buy listings prices on the 18th of December at 1 a.m. my time zone, one Divine Orb was 135 stack decks. Now, an hour before I recorded this video at 2 p.m. on the 23rd of December my time zone, one Divine Orb was 129 stack decks. So Divine Orbs are falling, right? It's time to sell, sell, sell your Divines. The other things that I looked at, Harvest Augment prices, so this is a Sacred Life Force and 15 to 17,000 of the various Coloured Life Forces. These are staying roughly constant against the Divine. They're somewhere in the two and a quarter Divine Orb range. And most other currencies and commodities are also moving with the Divine Orb as the Chaos Orb falls. Now this is not true of everything, but even currencies that usually fall in the middle of a league, like Fusing Orbs, are starting to rise against the Chaos Orb, but stay roughly constant or slowly fall against the Divine Orb. And a couple other things I tested in terms of commodities were invitations. The Elder Slayer's invitation has been pretty constant at about 0.35 Divine Orbs for a lot of the past week, even as the price of Divine Orbs has gone crazy. And the Eldritch invitations have stayed roughly constant against the Divine Orb as well. Now, it's not just one factor that's causing this. There's a bunch of things that happen. You can't really isolate any one of them. And I think that actually all of these factors are pointing in the same direction at the moment. And it's the first time that all of these factors have been in the same direction in one league. That's why we're entering uncharted territory here. So there are some people that claim it's 100% due to the 3.19 Exalt to Divine swap. And a quick recap for anyone that missed it as to what this change was. The vendor recipe where you vended a six link was changed to instead award 20 fusing orbs instead of one divine orb. 
Additionally, the Metamod Benchcrafts, this is prefixes can't change, suffixes can't change, can have up to three crafted modifiers, cannot roll attack mods, cannot roll caster mods. These are all changed to be denominated in Divine Orbs instead of their previous currencies. And additionally, a number of other Benchcrafts that used to cost pure Divine Orbs were changed to instead mostly cost Chaos Orbs and occasionally cost Exalted Orbs. So there are some people that claim it's 100% due to the 3.19 Exalt to Divine swap. Some people claim it's 100% due to the nerf of Loot Goblins. Some people claim it's 100% due to the player base getting better at the game. More skilled, more experienced players use more meta mods. Some people claim that it's 100% fear of missing out. Some people claim it's 100% due to bad Kirak mods. And others claim that it's an imbalance between the Exarch and Eater of Worlds rewards. Now I think none of these are completely true, but every single one of them is partly true. I want to go through these factors now. Let's start with the Exarch versus Eater question. The Eater of Worlds altars, they drop the Divine Orbs. The Searing Exarch drops Chaos Orbs, Sextons, but most importantly, the Searing Exarch ones also drop Headhunter and Mageblood Divination cards. You've got to get very lucky to get one of those, but you also have to be very lucky on the Eater side to get one of the Divine Orb rewards as well. And once you do all the maths, it seems like at the moment Searing Exarch is still miles, miles ahead. Now, this is because the Eater's loot pool is flooded with trash that comes up all the time. Alteration Orbs, Reign of Chaos Divination cards, Jeweler's Orbs, Fusing Orbs, all these flood the loot pool with garbage, and they mean that less people are running the Eater of Worlds. Now, the net effect here is that Alters are not following the 48 to 1 split that goes across the rest of the League economy. Alters are producing less Divine Orbs than intended and more Chaos Orbs than intended because people are quite rightly choosing the Searing Exarch rather than the Eater of Worlds. And that's still the case, even as Divine Orbs have hit 290 Chaos and Sextants have fallen to 108 to the Divine, the Searing Exarch is still considerably better, and that's because of all of those jewellery cards that give Mageblood and Headhunter being there as well. Really, I think the only thing GGG could do to fix this is to move about 300,000 weighting of garbage from the Eater of Worlds into the Searing Exarch pool, and then that would roughly balance the two again. So if you move the Divination cards that grant currency out of the Eater of Worlds, and they are actually rubbish because they're mostly Reign of Chaos and Loyalty, and you give them to the Searing Exarch instead, that would be something that would increase the value of running Eater of Worlds altars, decrease the value of Searing Exarch altars, and as a result would bring us back closer to that 1 to 48 breakdown, rather than the altars themselves providing way over 100 Chaos Orbs for every Divine Orb that they create. Next, we have the question of the Exalt to Divine Swap. Now, this is an interesting one in that it was a very controversial change at the time. Now that it's settled out, it's turned out to be a net power boost to the more casual players overall because they got more access to the crafting bench's best crafts. We're not talking about the meta mods here. We're talking about things like 100 to 129% increased physical damage on weapons. We're talking about things like 16 to 20% increased attack speed on weapons. Hits can't be evaded. The Katarina plus two to the level of socketed support gems mods. All these used to be prohibitively expensive and something that casual players would probably not use on their own gear. Nowadays, they're much more accessible than they were. Additionally, if you're only doing it sparingly, exalting gear is more powerful than divining gear. On the flip side, if you're at the upper end of players, and remember that the play base is getting better, so this is a bigger pool. This is not just 1% of players. If you're at the upper end of players, though, divining a lot is simply more powerful than exalting a lot is. So the ability to divine frivolously and exalt sparingly that you had in 3.19 provided you with more power than what you've got now, which is the ability to divine sparingly and exalt frivolously. And things like the three exalt cost of a Vagan mod was a once-only expense to those people, which didn't really matter to them. The key thing that this did, though, was that it reduced the acquisition of metamod currency, so that used to be exalted orbs, now it's divine orbs, by top-end players. This is because the divination cards for exalted orbs were very farmable. There's no equivalent of saint's treasure for divine orbs. Casuals didn't juice maps enough to get many of these, and so it didn't really affect them very much. But for the people who are giga juicers, this is a serious nerf to the amount of metamod currency that they're able to generate and then pump into the trade league economy. The net effect here is that there's a moderate reduction of the overall game-wide supply of metamod currency. Now, this would be a net nerf to Divination Scarabs, but the Apothecary became a better use for them anyway, and as a result, it didn't really have much of an impact there. Next, we have the question of the Loot Goblin nerf. So in 3.19, this is a real screenshot, but this is not a typical screenshot. This is like a 1 in 10,000 juice maps event, this is rarer than an Eldritch Altar duplicating an Apothecary card, and actually less economically significant than an Eldritch Altar duplicating an Apothecary card too. This was a 4-mod opulent currency god monster with 100% delirium, a colour, 3 rarity-enhancing expedition remnants. 
That is what caused this massive loot explosion. But what was much more typical for the top one or 2% of players was having a magic find color in conjunction with an aura bot, killing one monster that was a four mod god that had currency conversion on it, but that did not have opulent on it, and getting three to eight divine orbs from that monster. This was still a lot. And this, unlike the double digit numbers of divine orbs that you see in this screenshot, this was an economically significant thing across the whole trade league. This meant that last league, the top one to 2% of players were much richer than they normally are, and their wealth was concentrated in personally looted divine orbs. So very top end players were producing huge numbers of divine orbs in 3.19. This faucet has been turned off. The next factor is that the player base skill is rising. And really this isn't talked about enough in Path of Exile discussion in general, but in particular when it comes to the economy. Guides for getting established in a league used to be huge. When my channel was much smaller, my second real breakout video was a video on getting your first six link in a league. Now this is something that I think most players intuitively know how to do these days. Back then, that was information people really wanted. Now more experienced, more skilled, more knowledgeable, and more resourceful players are much more willing to use metamods than casual Andy who buys a Merc Lab carry on day 10. And the percentage of casual Andy players is in free fall. This is a long-term trend. It has been a long time since there was a large influx into Path of Exile. PoE's marketing is mostly aimed not at new players at the moment, but at lapsed players. They're trying to get them back interested in a new league while they work on Path of Exile 2, at which point there'll be much more of a push to attract brand new players. Now there are definitely new players and there are definitely people who just play very casually, but they're just a smaller percentage of the player base than they used to be. And that's important because those players loot Divine Orbs sometimes when they get lucky, but they don't really use them. They then just go and trade them and they end up in circulation in the economy. The next point is fear of missing out. Now when I say panic buying, people immediately think of toilet paper queues but often it's the most objectively sensible decision for every individual involved if they sincerely believe that the consequences of not buying something now are being in a worse position later than it is the rational decision for them to buy right now. So buy now or deal with the consequences of not buying. If you sincerely believe that Divine Orbs are going to be 360 chaos next week, you might be wrong, but if you're right, it is the objectively correct thing to do to go and buy them right now, even if you have to pay historically unprecedentedly high prices. And what we saw, once prices on Divines hit 215 Chaos, they just exploded to nearly 300 Chaos, as many people sincerely believed that they would keep going up, 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 and that nothing would arrest the rise. So they thought, all right, my Chaos Orbs are an asset I have to get rid of, no matter the cost, I just have to dump them right now. Now these people may end up being proven wrong, but they are acting rationally based upon available information and their sincere beliefs. Now the net effect of fear of missing out is an interesting one. This does not make divine orbs more expensive. This does not make chaos orbs less valuable. What it makes happen is trends materialize faster than they otherwise would have. Trends occur over hours rather than days or weeks. And if the trend and the underlying information is wrong, then this results in a huge transfer of wealth. But if the trend and the underlying information is right, then the people who get involved in the so-called fear of missing out panic buying end up being the ones that win out. And next we have the question of Kirak mods. So this league's Kirak mods are in a really interesting place. When I looked at them, I was like, oh wow, that's Delirium is back and it's the best it's ever been. Delirium used to be a really, really league defining Kirak mod to have, even when it cost 16 Chaos. And interestingly, when it cost 16 Chaos was the leagues that had the cheapest meta mods that we've ever seen. However, the expensive Kirak mods this league don't stack very well with Atlas support or Fragment support. And there's a lot more Atlas support than there used to be, and there's a lot more Fragments available than there used to be. So if you're playing a Ritual strategy, you don't use the Kirak Ritual mod. Instead, you buy Ritual Vessels off other players. Now, if you're running a Delirium strategy, your passive tree will have heaps of percentage chance to encounter the Delirium Mirror. These are mostly travel nodes. If you do run Kirak Delirium on a map, then all of those travel nodes get turned off for that map. They become completely useless for you. As a result, Delirium is not being used all that much on the map device. Now, Breach on the map device does stack, but generally Breach is best in a low investment strategy. This league, even Chayula Breach Stones are so cheap because the Breach support on the Atlas is so good. And as a consequence, people aren't using it very much. It's really Harbinger that's the only good Kerak mod. And Fracturing Orbs just aren't quite worth enough to make this happen in a huge way. I do think that if Fracture Orbs start hitting 1500 to 1800 Chaos, somewhere in that line, then Harbinger on the map device will start to become more useful. Players will start respecking their Atlas into Harbinger, 
They'll pick up that half a percent chance for Harbingers to drop a full orb instead of a single shard. They'll pick up that chance for Harbingers to be upgraded to boss encounters. They'll start buying a whole bunch of Harbinger Scarabs. And they will also start feeding Chaos Orbs into every map that they run in order to use the Kirak mod for Harbinger. This will start arresting things, but we're not at that point yet. Fracturing Orbs are currently, at the time I'm recording this video, about 1100 Chaos. So they would need to rise further. And if they don't rise further, then I don't think that Harbinger on the map device is enough. What's my advice if you just want to protect the wealth that you already have in League? Here I would say you want to be pretty careful about either buying into the Divine Orb hype or holding on to Chaos at the moment. I would be inclined to look for other consumables that endgame players want in large volume and start picking those up instead, just because I think it's a bit safer. I don't know how much of what we're seeing at the moment is a fear of missing out over reaction and how much of it is based upon real lasting trends. What I am reasonably confident about though is that something like Maven's Invitation the Elder Slayers will continue to hold considerable value in the future. And so those are the sorts of things I'd be picking up. Primary grading lenses, secondary regrading lenses, tailoring orbs, tempering orbs, Maven's Invitations, the ones that are rarer than the underlying maps, unidentified watcher's eyes, reliquary keys. Here we're not talking about the new Voidborn reliquary, we're talking about the existing reliquary keys that drop from uber versions of the bosses. These sorts of things that tend to hold value over an entire league and that the very wealthiest players tend to want. And even better if you can afford them mirror shards or other pieces of mirrors like the divination card House of Mirrors, the divination card Unrequited Love or the divination card The Immortal. All of these I think are safer things to have your currency in than divine orbs or chaos orbs while we're on this wild ride and while we see which way everything's going to balance out. One last thing I want to point out, I don't think that this is going to lead to a resurgence in chaos orb spam on items. GGG have simply given us too many far stronger crafting tools over the recent years. Broadly speaking, I don't think that chaos spamming is in a very good spot at all, even with these sorts of prizes helping it out. I did also want to put in a rare thank you to subscribers. I did tick over 24,000 in the last day and it is flattering, so thank you. And if you're not subscribed, subscribing will be a more multiplier to the percentage of my videos that show up in your feed. So that's an option if you're interested. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. May your Vile Orbs have interesting results and may your drops be divine.